So I think many of us understand the intimidation when it comes to having a side hustle and doing deliveries, right? A lot of us want to start doing food deliveries, but we need tips on how to do them better. So what I ended up doing is I went to my community post here on my YouTube channel to ask real gig drivers or gig workers, I should say, their tips and tricks on how to make gig work easier for you in 2023. Now, I am going to give credit to these people. These people are fantastic and you can go check them out in the community post itself. Either way, I'm going to tag their name in the bottom. If I don't catch it from remembering, you're still going to see it tagged on the bottom. So the first thing, and I think this is a common denominator, but this one did come in from Superman number one or Superman one. And this one is an important one for myself. And I've been saying it through and through. And I am going to say that this is the first thing to make things easier is do not accept every order. The thing is with these companies is they're going to put pressure tactics against you, such as they're going to put analytics or stats in front of you of confirmation or acceptance rate to make you feel more pressurized to take more orders. The catch is accept or decline. You will not get dismissed from these applications. Myself, I have a 3% acceptance rate with Uber Eats. What does that mean? It means that I decline 97% of the orders that come in out of 100% of the times. And am I happy with that? Yeah, why? Because I get to pick and choose my orders to get the best bang for my buck, and I want you to be doing the exact same thing. So I agree with Superman, and do not accept every order you get. Now this next one comes from somebody that's a real regular on my channel, and he goes by real name Kevin. So what Kevin has to say is a set a monetary goal, but don't be crushed if you don't achieve it. And that is something I highly believe in. When I started doing full-time gig work, I started doing it in the summertime. And honestly, the summertime slowdown is a real thing and we'll catch that in a future video. But I was trying to make myself monetary goals that are extremely hard to achieve. So if you don't achieve your goals, don't crush yourself over it. What I would suggest, probably set a higher expectation for the goal. This way, if you get under, you're not exactly underachieving your standard goal. It's gonna help you feel a little bit more better, but it's sometimes hard to predict these markets. For example, some people think Saturday nights are a hot market, but in mine, it's Saturday afternoons. So if you're out just at the wrong time, at the wrong part of the day, yeah, it could impact that monetary goal. But you will see that throughout seasons and throughout time changes, that monetary goal can be achievable. And if not, maybe you just need to change your markets to see if delivery apps do work for you. Inside Job CA actually came in with a lot of answers and I loved her answers because they were unique and a little bit different from what we do typically see. So one of them she did give, for example, which I did not even think about is take a stapler with you. Now this is not a common answer, but why would you? Because honestly, a lot of these companies staple their bags shut. Unlike McDonald's that uses a tape over version, a lot of these restaurants staple them shut. And what I've noticed nowadays is the more comfort for, for customers. A lot of customers do get scammed and they get things robbed out of their bags. So if you want to give them the piece of ease, it's true. Bring a stapler along the way with you. All you got to do is staple it shut if you notice it's open and then your customer is going to feel more relaxed. I'm not going to say that it's going to provide you an additional tip because I mean the customer is suspecting it's going to be closed already. But if the staples are open or the bag is open, your customer could suspect that it was you snooping around in the bag. So if you do have a stapler in you, with you, you, all you got to do is staple it shut and you're good to go. But another thing that Side Job CA recommended, and this is one I highly recommend, is when it comes to drink orders, you're going to need a drink carrier with you. Now, I do have the one that I use currently with me. And this one, I will let you know, I am an affiliate of Amazon, so you'll see links down below. If you do purchase them, I do gain commission, but either way, these are things I'm using regardless. So this is the drink holder that I'm using, and if you can see through the video example, it has straps here, and it's black on black. Smart move, Ash. Okay, so it has straps here, and basically what you can do is you put four drinks in, one at a time, but you can seal them with the strap to lock them into place, and then it secures my drinks and I can carry them up this way. I have tried the old achiever of putting the drinks in what we call a drink tray or what you call a cabaret here in Montreal, Quebec, and I put them inside my cooling bag and they have tumbled over before. Nobody wants to be the victim of explaining to the customer that the reason why they got half of a Diet Coke is because you spilled half of Diet Coke in the bag. Get yourself a drink carrier and it's going to help you so much more when it comes to doing these deliveries. Now this next one is still also from Sidejob CA. 
she recommended and this one i highly recommend even though we have a cell phone that has a flashlight on it these apps are constantly sending us orders so if you're browsing by your phone and you're already at a drop-off location and you're trying to get to your flashlight believe it or not if you don't disable it uber will push you orders for example when you're trying to drop off at the door it's so annoying and if you can't see your way going to the doorstep and you're trying to navigate to your phone and they're pushing you orders it's going to stress you out how do you avoid that? Simply bring a flashlight with you when you're doing nighttime deliveries. It makes all the difference. I cannot explain to you how many times I've been on a porch where I can't make a way where I'm going, but as well, sometimes we're taking a picture of the order. Have you ever taken a picture where your delivery, delivery bag is black on a black doormat on a black wooden staircase? It's pretty dark to see. So if I have a flashlight at least shining as I'm taking the picture, I'm good to go. Now again, it can be a cross example of things because many people will say, I'm still going to use my cell phone as a flashlight. That's great. The key tip here is just make sure when you're doing nighttime deliveries, you do have a flashlight on you. Now, the last couple of tips that we do have in the mix is pretty much a miscellaneous batch that came from a lot of different drivers. For example, get to know your market. And this one, I could not agree with more. If you don't understand your market and you don't know where the best restaurants are, you might want to start looking into that. The reason why is because markets can determine our payable outcome. I go all the time, Brassard, Longuil, sometimes this town, sometimes St. Bruno, but in the long end, I know that Brassard is my biggest moneymaker. I thought in the beginning it was Longuil. Turns out it wasn't. Why? Because fast food joints don't make me that much more money. But a nice sit down restaurant or going for Chinese food or sushi, now that brings me more money in the mix. So if you get to know your market, try to find a ratio where it's more, I would say, sit down restaurants. It doesn't have to be that expensive. But if you know your market and you know that, for example, fast food like myself is not exactly the way to go, you're going to establish more money in your bank account and conquer this side hustle. And here's another one in the mix. Again, overwhelming common denominator here in the mix. Make sure you're not doing too much wear and tear on your car. How can you do that? check the kilometers of the distance that you're going as well I this is my primary car I'm actually sitting on the passenger side today just to get a different view of things in videos but I, I, I think this is a mistake using my own primary car as a source for gig work because do I know I'm gonna be paying for it later yes the difference is, is do do I do 40 hours worth of gig work per week no I would say I put probably about part time, probably about 20 hours worth of gig work in per week. And because of that, I am doing less than a full timer because I get to make videos. But is that going to be the same outcome for everybody that does this as a gig? No, there's a lot of people that do this full time. And if you're doing this full time, you don't necessarily need to. But maybe down in the long run, you might want to change up for a used car that's going to be used for gig work because this is going to take some tear, some wear and tear on your car for sure and i have one more in the mix for you and this one as well extremely overwhelming amount of people that said the exact same thing and i have been saying this ever since the get-go of starting my videos check your dollars to kilometers or if you convert to miles dollars to miles basically you want to either do more dollars than miles or more dollars than kilometers on my channel on a regular basis if i'm doing a food rush I'm making sure that I'm getting at least $2 per kilometer. Why? Because if it's lunch or dinner time and you want my services, I want to be paid for the good amount that I should be. Now, some people say in Canada, $1.50 is good. It is. It's good if it is on the hours that are my in-between hours. Otherwise, if I know I can get more, then I'm going to get more. For example, somebody was recently telling me when it comes to double stacked orders that they accepted a $9 for two orders and it took a lot of time. My answer is always, I say it in all my videos, I don't move my tires for when it comes down to price tag for less than $7. I go between $6.50 to $7. Now, if I'm doing a double stacked order, I'm going to double that. So that means I'm not going to move my tires for typically less than $14. For two orders if you keep this ratio in mind and you make sure that you're doing your dollars to kilometer ratio you will make more money and you will succeed at doing food deliveries but if you give in to every single order if you do orders that are let's say 15 kilometers for seven or eight dollars you're not going to make the money that you that you want to make if anything it's going to cost you more money and then you're going to feel the impact when you're doing gig work of course a car shows up right when i'm recording 
So I hope this helps you lovelies when it comes to tips and tricks of doing food deliveries. And I'll catch you lovelies in the next video.